Ohayou gozaimasu. So today I'm going to be making curry, Japanese style curry, which is a childhood favorite of mine and the kids favorite and also Judy's favorite, frankly. Um, so I'm going to make it. I'm going to make a ground beef version. It's awesome. I'm going to shop for the ingredients and then start cooking. Okay, first thing is potatoes. I'm going to do these organic rusted potatoes, which are perfect. And then you can obviously use this for so many other dishes. Next ingredient, carrots. I personally prefer these ones that are on the bunch. Uh, more flavorful, sweeter. I just use yellow onions. There's really only two more ingredients I get. Ground beef, which I already have at home. It's thong out because I, I buy ground beef in bulk. And then soup stock or bone stock. All right, so I said bone broth. You can totally use chicken stock. I prefer beef bone broth. So I learned this technique from uh, Chef Ivan runs a ramen restaurant in New York City. I've been to it. And he adds chicken stock, which is smart because normally you just add water, but this is an easy way to get something wholesome into your meal for your kids. And beef bone broth, they make this from bones, really good for you. So hides all the kind of funkiness of it just being a soup. It's just good. Last but not least, Leap and Lemur's organic peanut butter and chocolate cereal special request. This is not for Curry, this is for Leah. Time to head home. Grand total. That was 44 bucks, but that includes uh, 18 organic eggs from our favorite company, Vital Farms, as well as a gallon of organic milk. Normally we get it from Costco but we ran out of milk, believe it or not. So anyways, going back home, time to cook. All right, I'm here. I'm about to prep all my ingredients. This is the ground beef I use. This is from Sweetgrass Farms. It's grass fed, so even, uh, even the meat has good stuff for the kids. This is a brand of curry used, Vermont curry. And you can get that at any Asian grocery store. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up everything, get it all prepped. For a side dish, I'm gonna be doing some asparagus with this garlic olive oil that I made yesterday. So the olive oil has been soaking up all that garlic goodness. And I will put this into the oven and just roast it. All right, let's cook some curry. All right, so I prepped everything and I want to explain exactly why I did everything. So I break this up or chop it up so that it dissolves a little bit quicker and this is the curry bricks. This is what it looks like if you've never made it. Potatoes, pretty basic. You want it with uniform so they all cook together. This will be last because I don't want to overcook these and then they become mushy. Um, put them in water so they don't turn brown. You know, with the onions, I try to dice it up to as small as possible. Not necessarily mince it, but if you mince it, it wouldn't be a bad thing. Carrots, rough chop these. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, none of these, none of these are the same size or shape. I just like that. It's, it's something to do with Asian cook. I don't know where uh, it comes from. And then even with the beef, I do open it up. I break it apart and I salt and pepper it so that it's already got all that going on when I put it into the pot. My liquids are ready. I'm gonna be using some clarified butter, which I should probably do a video. Let me know if you're curious about me doing a video on this, because it's so useful for so many things. Now it's time to cook. Over here, I will be doing a half-boiled egg, but for right now, I'm gonna focus on the curry. So I did brown the meat. That brings out a lot of the flavor because it's caramelizing that fat. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. You don't have to do this. Uh, Judy usually puts the onions right in there, but I like to, I'm gonna turn off the heat actually so it doesn't splatter. I like to remove it. I use this uh, spider spoon or whatever it's called. And then that way I can get the onions in there, which is gonna go in next and have a cleaner cook cooking surface while at the same time keeping all that goodness in there. Crank up the heat. Super high. All the onions. 
All right, so I'm going to just saute these uh, till they soften up. Then I'm going to add the carrots and then the liquids. I want to keep stirring constantly so that it doesn't burn. Don't worry about this right here. This is all flavor. We're going to get all that with the liquids. I'm going to go ahead and add the carrots. Saute them or cook them for a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the cooking liquid, which is the beef stock, the bone broth. Still the highest heat. There we go. So it wasn't enough liquid, just the bone broth alone, so I'm going to add a little more liquid here. There we go. Alright, so this has been cooking covered on a low heat for about... I want to say five minutes is not really bubbling. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and crank up the heat. So what I like to do is add the meat back in, whatever meat you're using, in this case, ground beef. Uh, then what I do is I add some of the curry bricks, not all of them, just some of them, to start incorporating them. Go ahead and stir. And right now what I'm going to do is get these carrots just to the point where they're about done, but not fully done. They're going to take a little bit longer to cook than the potatoes, so it's important that you try them to make sure they're not too soft and also that they're not so hard that it takes longer to cook these and those get mushy. So, Other than this part, cooking the carrots and the potatoes just to the right texture, the right doneness, curry is super easy. It doesn't take very long. This is a fancier uh, curry, but you don't need the beef stock, you don't need any chicken stock. You don't need to separate the meat out if you don't want, you can put the onions right in. That's what Judy does, and she just kind of goes to town and she cooks it real quick. Alright, so the girls do like their half-boiled eggs, which is, it's just soft-boiled. And this is a half-boiled method. Make sure you have your ice bath ready. So I'm going to go ahead and place these in here. This is super easy, just five minutes in boiling water and then right into the ice bath after that. And we're just about there. I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these out and fill it. Bed? Okay, it's not quite bed? cooked. So I'm bed? gonna let that cook for about one oh, more minute and then I will start adding the potatoes. Bed? You know, not always, but sometimes I do skim off some of this stuff at the top. Why not? I've got the tools and the time. Not absolutely necessary, but... Just get it all off. Oh. Don't grab any of the actual ingredients. There you go. Okay. To start adding some of the potatoes. Slowly, because these are kind of cold. Just like before, I am slowly incorporating more of those curry bricks. You don't want to put it in all at once. I don't like to add the curry bricks until the very end when I know all the ingredients are just about ready. All right, so the timer just went off for these eggs. Simply just put them right into the ice bath immediately. There we go. This is gonna shock them to stop the cooking process. And I believe it actually makes it easier to peel for me at least. I'm gonna go ahead and add almost all the rest of the curry bricks, maybe just a few left, because you're gonna have to gauge it. Like I mentioned, this, this is such a crucial part. You have to try it. What do you mean crucial part? Crucial. You don't want overcooked potatoes or undercooked carrots. Still need some time, maybe like five more minutes. Sometimes you need extra curry brick, so I do have a spare box that I just use a couple bricks. Because I do like it to be a certain consistency in terms of thickness. Um, but if it's too watered down or too soupy, you want to add some extra bricks. Right now it seems to me it's going to turn out good. One reason why it's important to always try your carrots and potatoes, and why I can't tell you an exact time, because different types of carrots, different types of potatoes are going to have um, different densities depending on the time of year, the type of uh, carrot or potato is. So this is why it's hard to tell you exact. Cooking is very much about the feel. Uh, Mama, one of the things that is so famous about her, 
She doesn't measure anything. Dad. Yeah. Did did mom ever measure anything, or did she do it all by memory? I think by just memory. Yeah. yeah. She never measured anything. Yeah. But it's the same with anything. Yeah. You gotta get uh get in touch with your instincts. There you go. There you go. All right. So the eggs are just about done. You don't want to leave them in there too long because you don't want them to get completely cold. That was in there for a good five minutes. Sometimes they can still have a warmth to them, but since we're not going to eat for a while anyways, I'm just going to let them uh, stay out and then peel them after the curry's done. tried this, I have a feeling most of you, if not all, will love it. How do you like it? You like it? Really? 